Hey, welcome to the updated video on the best heroes to flux and save the world. I did make an old video on this, but we got a recent update that makes more heroes fluxable than ever. Every single event hero that is not a mythic hero that comes from llamas is now fluxable, which gives us a lot to work with. That also gives me a nice little disclaimer to spend wisely. This yearly timeline is linked in every video. This showcases when stuff comes around. I will be covering every single event in this video. So if you are looking to flux a specific hero, make sure that they aren't available. For example, I'm recording this on April 25th. That might date this video if it goes out late, but what I'm saying is if any of these heroes are super good and I want to flux them, they might be coming out soon enough to where it might not be worth fluxing. So just be careful about when and how you spend. And on that note, I want to recommend against fluxing base game heroes. I will be recommending the best base game and expansion heroes in the entire game, but these heroes come around very regularly in base game llamas and in the mission alerts. I cover these daily on my channel. I make videos on the missions every single day. So I like to point this stuff out when it comes around. Be careful on spending on base game heroes because they might come around very soon. Now, if you're looking to get flux, these are the three main ways to do it. First and foremost is the easiest this is the weekly shop. I recommend buying this every single week. It's only 50, sometimes 150, but that's usually the most consistent source. The other most consistent source are Ventures rewards. So Ventures gives you 200 legendary flux every single season, which can be used on weapons or heroes, by the way, at level 16 and level 22. In my opinion, there are so many amazing heroes and weapons that are fluxible that they're basically a second voucher, in my opinion. And if you're looking to get weapon designs and trap designs and manuals, you can just open up llama it's super easy to open llamas, just recycle the stuff you don't need, and you can just flux whatever you want. And then the third main way are collection book levels. You can see I've got some coming up at level 760. This is a nice, beautiful breakdown from Storm God on every single collection book level that gives you legendary flux. It's sometimes 50, sometimes 100, but it's consistent. And as you level up the collection book, you will unlock more. If you're a newer player, I recommend against just leveling up your collection book randomly. You don't want to use anything but duplicates in the collection book. You want to keep a copy of every single hero and weapon on you at all times because you'd be amazed some of the worst weapons and heroes in the game can be really good for a certain loadout or good for a certain use case or they get updated you never know and you want to be careful with that now, on top of the ways to get legendary flux in the game, I actually might recommend epic flux. A lot of the heroes you're going to see recommended in this video are perfectly fine as a purple hero. Not every single hero needs to be legendary. A lot of times you just want the perk to work in support and an epic hero will have the exact same perk bonus as a legendary hero. So if some of the heroes I recommend are perfectly fine and something you want to use and they don't need to be legendary, I recommend using epic flux because it's perfectly fine as well. And as time goes on and you amass an insane amount of legendary flux like I have, you can just bump them up to legendary or just get them naturally. Either way works. All right, with all that said, let's just get straight into it. I recommend it against fluxing base game stuff, but if you're going to do it, Special Forces Banshee is one of the better heroes in the entire game. That war cry buffs your weapon damage and movement speed by so much that it's just amazing. And then we got Sergeant Jonesy, who is super good for going commando. He increases it by five seconds. I have a whole minigun loadout video. I'll link that down below. If you want that to be a true five second cooldown, Sergeant Jonesy is what you want. I'm going a little faster because I've covered this a lot on my channel. Kind of Spitfire is exactly what I was talking about. You put him in the lead, your cooldown is tremendously reduced and it's super, super strong. Rescue Trooper Ramirez is super fantastic for SMG and assault weapon damage. That 50% bonus is one of my favorite in the game. I've supercharged the copy that I use because it's just amazing. Upping the health has made that hero just a very casual good one. Another amazing base game soldier is Colonel Wildcat. She just gives you a war cry cooldown. It's not that significant, but in every video I've ever made on war cry, she's recommended. So you'll definitely definitely find her useful. Now, I recommend against Survivalist Jonesy a lot because that healing bonus is not it's almost the weakest healing bonus in the game, but it's so consistent as you're getting eliminations that he's worth considering. I don't know if I'd recommend Flux him because he's a base game hero, but he is there and you might want him. And then the campaign stuff is available through the campaign and voucher only. Onto the constructors. Power Base Nox is one of the best in the game. That healing effect is fantastic in support. It's fantastic in the lead. It'll make your walls repair themselves and it's super, super strong. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit just to pair him with base Kyle. Yes, I do not have a legendary copy in the book. I don't know either, but he increases your base's health by 84% in the lead, 28% in support. That is a massive bonus. He and Nox should always be used together. Super, super strong constructors. Mega Base Kyle is also fantastic. I use him in my Supercharged Trap series where he covers a nice wide area and his team perk is, you're not going to believe this, Supercharged Traps, which makes your traps do up to 42% more damage. That's a lot. And by covering that big area, it affects every trap in range, including your teammates. Super, super good hero. He is worth 
a lot of training manuals and a lot of flux. I don't typically recommend researching him this way because it's super expensive. I don't think he's worth two and a half normal heroes. But if you get lucky enough to see him in a llama or something, he's a great pickup, by the way. Tank Penny, kind of a weird pick because hardware damage is not usually used. But if you're running the Storm King fight, having her in support is amazing because hardware weapons are usually the best for the horn. That's including like the Surround Pound and the Storm King's Fury and the Baron. Those are usually the better picks. And Guardian Bull is really good for that hardware crit rating, upping it by 17. Who doesn't want to crit more? Another amazing constructor is actually Electro Pulse Penny. She doesn't really work that great in the end game because that 15 base damage is basically nothing, but she is extremely good in the early game. All right, the, the lower level mission you run a base the better she is and I use her all the time for just like AFK and V-Buck missions super useful hero moving on to the ninjas we got some really good picks in here first and foremost is Dragon Scorch he is the winner for Dragon Slash he ups your range your width your damage he makes the Dragon Slash the best it can be I highly recommend using him Assassin Sarah works with every melee in the game I use her in support constantly and she's fantastic in the lead as well super super good ninja I love that it's a base game hero because an amazing hero like that should be accessible. Now, something that's less prolific is Dimakmari. Smoke Bomb cooldown. Smoke Bomb's not the best ability in the game, but it's nice sometimes, so I figured I'd point her out. I don't think it's worth any flux, but I wanted to mention her anyway. Swordmaster Ken, same deal as Mega Base, where he's not nearly as good as Mega Base, but he's a hero that is not nearly worth the price. Sword damage and Shadow Stance is easy. So Shadow Stance is something that triggers from ninjas. Basically, whenever you get an elimination, you do more speed and armor. That's pretty much it. And doing more damage during that state can be good. Is he worth a tremendous cost? I don't know about that. So you're going to have to tread lightly with that one. And uh, that's pretty much it for that. Moving on to Outlanders. We got a couple of them in here. Recon Scout actually got changed recently. Uh, since my last video, she was 30% in support and won 40% in the lead. But that 140% went over the movement cap of the game. So she apparently never, ever functioned. So now instead of giving you more speed in the lead, she gives you more time. Either way, she's more of a support hero regardless. Flash AC is kind of the better lead. So you put her in support, you move faster when you phase shift. It's really nice. Uh, really, really good hero altogether. Then we got Trailblazer Quinn, which ups your Teddy damage. I'm not much of a Teddy lover, but if you do use Teddy in like the early game adventures, or if you're just being lazy in the lower zones running a V-Buck mission, she is fantastic to up that damage, and I highly recommend her. Pathfinder Jess is one of the staple heroes for farming in Fortnite Save the World. That increased pickaxe damage is just great. You can run her in the lead, you can run her in support. She makes you mind stuff faster. I, I've explained more in my farming loadout video. I'll link that down below. Super, super good hero and worth picking up. Ranger Deadeye basically has all of the praise I gave Rescue Trooper Ramirez with that damage bonus to SMGs and pistols. SMGs are amazing enough where he gives that 50% damage bonus to SMGs and pistols, but he has all of the abilities of an Outlander. You can phase shift to get around really, really quick or reload instantly with Chaos Agent. He has Teddy, which I kind of knocked recently, but it's free damage if you're already running an SMG. Sizic Smash, which is actually really good against a crowd of enemies and as an outlander you have anti-material charge you can farm while you're running this build i supercharged him just for the teddy damage alone super super good hero and i guess outlanders are a bit more frail than soldiers so giving him extra health and shield was an easy win so definitely an amazing hero i cannot believe it's a base game one Phase Scout Jess, same with the other Mythics, is really good for like extra phase shift charges. It's not the most amazing bonus ever, and her team perk is not that amazing either. And she's extremely expensive. So I, I can't recommend, like if you have her user, but I never recommend fluxing her because she's just too expensive. Now the first event heroes we can flux are the Art Deco ones. Once again, these come around in llamas fairly regularly. So with x-ray tickets, you can get all of these, but these are the good ones. Noir is fantastic for lefty and righty duration. It's only 10 seconds, but with an ability that's doing millions of damage. He is super, super good in support for those builds. Then we've also got Gumshoe. Now, Gumshoe's tricky. She increases your fragment ability damage. That is Shock Tower and Teddy. Now, those are fragment abilities, but she does not require a fragment. So she is just a flat 30% bonus to both. She's basically like Trailblazer Quinn, giving 30% to your Teddy, but Shock Tower as well. A fantastic hero all around, definitely worth using. Now, the rad heroes are some of my top recommendations for flux in the game. In my voucher video, I'll link that down below, I recommended Dennis Jr. because Totally Rockin' Out is insanely good. And flux is how you get all of these. Pretty much every single one of these are good. Power Pop is kind of the standout where I don't love the heavy attack eliminations. Some players love that. I don't see much use from it. Breakbeat Wildcat is by far the most used because eliminating 10 enemies in 9 seconds grants Rock and Rift. That activates the team perk. It also gives you damage and melee attack speed. Super, super good. And 
that counts from traps. So if you just trap semi-decently, you will basically have constant Tully Rocket out. If you want to trigger it whenever you want, use Main Stage Quinn to get Subwafers. If you want to, I guess, get it more active in the heat of the battle, Fumble can make it so that enemies will drop a football that immediately activates the team perk. Super, super good. Super, super nice. All of the rad heroes are really, really good. Power Pop is kind of my last favorite, but even if you're using a, a melee heavy attack, she can be great. On to the pirates. Now, I knocked Survivalist earlier, and that's because Crossbones Barrett exists. I have honestly slid back on this opinion over time. I stand by the words that I have used in the past to call him the best support perk in the entire game because coconuts are insane. And that 30% scales with your health, which means blast in the past. Sometimes you can get up to 2 million health. He will give you over 600,000 health with one coconut. And it heals you over 30 seconds at a speed that is faster than two maxed out campfires. I cannot overstate how amazing he is and if the healing wasn't amazing he gives you a 60 percent damage bonus he's insane and and they give you a utility slot where you can put the coconuts off to the side and it doesn't even take up one of your weapon slots the only downside is you start with zero coconuts and a 20 percent chance is pretty low when you can realize that that means sometimes you spend 10 minutes finding enough coconuts for the entire mission it is super tedious and annoying to use crossbones barrett i almost never use him anymore because of that alone but he's way too strong to ignore and i highly recommend using him if you want the best healing in the entire game and a damage bonus on top of that now the other pirates are pretty good privateer hype is really good for the club damage i'm recommending the pirates because blakebeard stash is amazing again i recommended him in the hero voucher video blakebeard stash team perk is super good just for a consistent loadout that works in every venture season and in regular missions as well so the pirates are generally good i recommend using blakebeard and support crossbones barrett and privateer hype those are the three that matter the others are kind of not great or voucher only so yeah i'm just gonna kind of leave it there Moving on to the spy heroes are two heroes I recommend for newer players. Uh, I don't use these myself, but Bomb Squad Kyle is really good for just increasing your armor. He makes you die less, and if you're a newer player who's getting used to things, that can be helpful. And if you're somebody who doesn't have a ton of hero options and you want to reduce your gadget cooldowns, Undercover Buzz can be great. But if you don't have a ton of options and you've got flux to spend, I'm going to list like two or three dozen better options in this video alone but she does still exist. So maybe if you got her from a Spy Llama and you don't need to flux her, I'm telling you right now, she's pretty decent, but not something you'll be using forever. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned Flash AC. He is currently one of my favorite heroes in the entire game for really weird reasons. First and foremost, his intended use case is phase shifting around very fast. I used him in a dungeon loadout. I'll link that down below. Getting through dungeons insanely quick is super fun, super easy. And if you <laughs> use him in a different way, pair him with Chaos Agent, you can reload instantly with your Phase shift constantly and if you use some black metal six perk trickery you could do millions of damage per phase shift i'll link that video down below it is the strongest loadout i've ever seen the thumbnail is not clickbait so yeah flash ac is kind of insane for some very unintuitive reasons but uh i'm gonna leave it at that you guys can check out those videos to learn more now in the holiday section we got a hero that is unfortunately left our flux suggestions ted is now voucher only which is kind of a sad thing he's really really good but voucher only now what is not voucher only is alchemist Sarah. so she gives you smoke bomb healing it's not the primary ability i'd ever recommend but if you're running smoke bombs anyway she could be nice to heal you for a lot that also applies to teammates so pretty cool then there's also fragment flurry jess who is really really good for teddies because i mentioned them earlier in the video i'm gonna bring her up now those eliminations can give you extra charge fragments so she could be really really good to keep that teddy rolling in the wild west section i want to mention that wild west llamas do come by in the shop randomly so once again if you have x-ray tickets you might want to wait for that but if you don't want to wait to get lucky first shot rio is super good i mentioned that flash ac build she is important to make sure that you crit on the next two shots and you can run her in the lead to make sure you crit six times in a row that's kind of insane i ran her in a hydra video and i think the rat king video i'll link those both down below super super fun hero if you want to use her for that 100 crit chance wild fragment deadeye is also great if you're running shock tower the extra affliction damage is tight and that's it i mean it's just extra affliction damage what more do you want four nightmares oh i've said it before i'll say it again one of the best events in the entire game skull ranger ramirez and skull trooper ramirez are both very good because whenever you reload you just do 50 percent more damage for five seconds and you reload a lot in this game so she's just great get her she's awesome go recruit her very useful hero another one is ghoul trooper ramirez or ghoul trooper jonesy they increase your war cry by three seconds that doesn't sound like a lot but when you're using a war cry build well, i'll just say i recommend her in pretty much every video i've brought up war cry super super useful and some people run her in the lead for the storm king fight 
fight because you can pop that war cry which is extended my nine seconds which brings it up to kind of a long time that'll get you enough war cry to break the storm king horn and it'll bleed over into the end phase where you're killing him a bit faster i have found that to be very useful so it's something you can consider now another hero that's kind of weird is sarah hotep dragon slash energy cost sounds a little odd but when you're running dragon scorch in the lead Dragon Slash is like 50 energy, and cutting that down by 30% can be enough to use all of your abilities on 100 energy. Kind of a nice hero. I don't know if she's worth a flux, but that can be pretty useful sometimes, so I figured I'd mention it. And then Beetle Jess is also insanely good. I wanted to recommend her in that Valager video so good. She pairs with Totally Rocking Out fantastically. A 225% bonus damage to SMGs and pistols is a lot, especially if you're critting all the time with Totally Rocking Out, and she's an Outlander, so just take everything good I said about Ranger Deadeye earlier and apply it to this because she is fantastic. She is very very worth researching and then finally we got the sci-fi stuff once again with all the llama items i have to say this comes around in the llama shop randomly and it costs x-ray tickets so you might be able to get these heroes that way but rio got updated a long time ago to do energy damage and that 20 percent bonus is really good so you do need your shields to be half full, but it's really, really good. That energy damage applies to weapons and abilities, so it's super, super useful. And I have to mention Cyberclops. I've never been a fan. I think he's overrated, but some people like to use him. He does affect traps, so you get a little bit of an extra damage bonus from that. Kind of a good hero. He's a really good Teddy lead if you're running this in Ventures, maybe, but uh, something you might want to pick up. Once again, he is available in the Llamas. Now moving on to the expansion people. We got the Battle Breaker stuff in here. Not the best heroes in the game, but I mentioned Double Agent Evelyn earlier, and she is really, really good with lefty and righty. I believe I mentioned her in the voucher video because a lot of the lefty and righty commanders are amazing and only through vouchers and she could be really good for reducing that cooldown not sure if she's worth flux but i figured i'd mention her either way and another amazing hero is demolitionist penny so she is the only hero in the entire game that directly buffs the damage from launchers launchers are unsurprisingly the strongest weapon class in the entire game and she makes them even better i have supercharged the one copy i have of her and considering i don't even have her in the collection book will tell you as much as you need to know. She's rare, okay? She only comes around military llamas and they are extremely rare and the military llamas are packed with shadow ops heroes and the military weapons. So you can pretty much only get her from Flux. I highly recommend picking her up. Very, very useful hero. And that's pretty much it for the shadow ops heroes. Another amazing pick is Bulletstorm Jonesy. I uh, always recommend pairing him with Crackshot. Crackshot is voucher only, but Bulletstorm should always be in support. They stack together. So while Crackshot's upping your damage by every single shot, Bulletstorm is doing the exact same thing right next to him. Super, super good bonus. Crackshot builds are some of my favorite in the entire game. I'll link one or two down below because it's a good time. Now, some people use heavy base Kyle in their bases. I don't know if I love the damage. It doesn't ever seem to matter, but it's there if you want it and constructors are overpowered as it is. So yeah, you might want to grab them. In the Storm Zone Heroes section, we have Deadly Blade Crash. She is, again, one of the best heroes in the entire game. That extra affliction and snare damage from melee crits is super, super good. I run her in support every single time I have a decent crit chance on my melee and you should too. So that's it. She's also great in the lead. If you want to do that as well, up to you. And in the Scavenger Hero section, we have Shrapnel Headhunter. She is the big shotgun damage hero. I've supercharged her. I've used her in the lead for a very long time. I find her to be more consistent over critting, but Buckshot Raptor should be in support if he's not in the lead. Shrapnel Headhunter is amazing. Shotguns are... All right. I said earlier that launchers are the strongest weapon class in the game. That is technically true because of area of effect damage, but shotguns, I believe, are the highest single target DPS weapon class in the game. They are monstrously strong. I was able to achieve 3 million DPS with a ground pounder in the loadout. I'll link down below. And the Husbuster is basically the same number. It's insane. Uh, shotguns are very, very good, and she makes them even better. If you're trying to make more stuff even better, Gunblazer Southie is a weird one because face shift can be used with him to increase your weapon damage by 105% and you can reload instantly with Chaos Agent. Pair those two together and you are off to an amazing start. It's a very, very fun build. A little weird to use, but it's definitely recommended. And then Machinist Harper on top of all of that is great because she increases trap durability. A lot of people like to use her in Endurance. She affects globally every trap on the map, meaning there is no base requirement, meaning every single trap you and your teammates combined will get buffed by that trap durability. I don't think she's at all useful in the end game if you're just playing normal missions basic trap durability survivors will be fine a trap durability perk will be fine but if you're running endurance or if you're a newer player who doesn't have your squads maxed out she could be amazing 
And that covers it. That is all the heroes I recommend fluxing in Fortnite Save the World. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you guys want any more videos, you know, comment down below. Subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one. And uh, take it easy. <laughs>